everyone this is Dr. Kazi and in this video we are going to learn about the drug clearance by the kidney and overview of phase reaction especially the phase 2 reaction in the previous video we have learned about the phase 1 reaction let's do a little bit of revision we know that in our kidney we have millions of nephron now the nephron consists of the glomerulus portion the proximal portion the loop of Henle the distal portion and the collecting duct. Now the kidneys, they cannot eliminate the lipophilic drugs. Why? Because in this distal portion, which I have shown with the green color, the lipophilic drugs are reabsorbed into our systemic circulation. So they are not excreted in the urine. So in order to prevent this, the lipophilic drugs are converted into polar compounds or water soluble compounds. So they should be eliminated. In the urine now the lipid soluble agents are converted into the polar compounds by using liver now liver perform two functions the phase one reactions and the phase two reaction in the previous video we have learned about the phase one reactions using cytochrome p450 system now some drugs use enzyme to perform the phase one reaction and some drugs use cytochrome p450 system to convert themselves into polar compounds and it should be eliminated from the body now the drugs which use enzyme for the phase one reaction are the amine oxidase this enzyme is used for the catecholamines oxidation of catecholamines by the amine oxidase converted into polar compounds and eliminated from the body the alcohol dehydrogenase for ethanol oxidase. Esterases and hydrolysis are used for aspirin and the prokin. Now, if phase 1 metabolites are polar, they are excreted from the body immediately. If phase 1 metabolites are not polar, so we have the phase 2 reaction, which consists of the conjugation reaction. Phase 1 metabolites, if they are not polar, they undergo the phase 2 reaction which consists of the conjugation reaction very simple to understand now in conjugation reaction we have the addition of the polar compounds in order to make the drug polar so it should be excreted water soluble now if it is water soluble after conjugation reaction the drug is therapeutically less active as comparison to its predecessor now the amino acid and glucuronic acid, sulfuric acid and the acetic acid. These agents are used for the conjugation reaction, make the compound polar, water soluble and excreted from the body. Now, after conjugation reaction, the drug is therapeutically less active, less potent. Now, there is an exception which I want you to remember. Morphine 6 glucuronide it is more potent the conjugation after the conjugation reaction of morphine the morphine is converted into the morphine 6 glucuronide but this compound is more potent therapeutically more active as comparison to morphine this is the exception so you have to remember this one now how the drug is cleared from the body by using kidneys remember we have made the drug polar by using phase 1 and phase 2 reaction the drug is polar the drug is water soluble so how the kidneys will eliminate or excrete this water soluble drug from the body now this process is very very similar to urine formation consists of three steps the glomerular filtration the proximal tubular secretion and the distal tubular reabsorption let's discuss this one by one but before discussing that you should know about the anatomy of the nephron so have a look at this diagram this is the afferent arterial which is arriving into the bowman's capsule the bowman's capsule which i have shown with the green color now this afferent arterial or a for afferent a for arriving it is making a capillary network or the capillary tuft which is known as the glomerular capillaries and the efferent arterial is coming out of this glomerular capillaries and this efferent arterial is making the peritubular capillary network especially 
around the proximal convoluted tubule. The Bowman's capsule continue into the proximal tubule which I have shown with the orange color and then we have the loop of Henle which I have shown with the pink color, the distal tubule and finally the collecting duct. So the efferent arteriole which is coming out of this Bowman capsule, it is making a capillary network around the proximal tubule and then this capillary network joins to form the renal vein and it enters the systemic circulation. Now, in case of glomerular filtration, the free drug which is arriving from the afferent arteriole due to pressure filtration, this drug is filtered into the Bowman's capsule. And after the Bowman's capsule, it enters the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, and the collecting duct. And finally, it is eliminated in the urine. Now, this process, the glomerular filtration, the drug is only influenced by the protein binding. If protein is binded with the drug, it cannot be filtered through the slit junctions present in the Bowman's capsule. So only determining factor is the protein binding. This process is not influenced by the lipid solubility and pH. It has no effect on the glomerular filtration of the drug. Now, in the proximal tubular secretion, remember, efferent arteriole, which is making the peritubulary capillary network around the proximal tubule, and this capillary network will continue to form the renal vein and finally enter the systemic circulation. Now, the free drug is filtered into the glomerular filtrate, but the drug which is active or the drug which cannot be filtered, it travels through the efferent arteriole and it will travel in the peritubular capillary network around the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, this is very, very important. So you have to focus. So the drug which is present in the peritubular capillary network, this drug is actively secreted by using energy into the proximal convoluted tubule, which I have shown with the orange color. It is actively secreted, the drug which is present in these peritubular capillary network. By using energy, it is secreted into the proximal tubule, into the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, and finally excreted in the urine. Now, there are two processes. One is for the anion and one is for the cation. This process occurs actively by using carrier protein. The carrier protein take the drug and they are eliminated in the proximal tubular lumen. For anion, we have the weak acid and the deprotonated form of the drug. For cation, we have weak bases and the protonated form of the drug. Anion, cation, both, they are actively secreted from the peritubular capillary network into the proximal tubular lumen. Now, you have to remember this clinical. It is very, very important. If you are taking two drugs at the same time, like the penicillin and probenecid, it actively competes for the carrier protein, which are present in the peritubular capillaries and proximal tubule. So both drugs will compete for the carriers, which will transport the drug from the peritubular capillary network into the proximal tubule. So only probenecid is excreted from the peritubular capillaries into the proximal tubule, into the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, and finally into the urine. The penicillin is retained in our body if we are taking two medications at the same time because they both are competing for the carrier protein. Now, in case of infants, because these capillary network are very less developed so the infants retain the drug in our body the drug cannot be actively secreted into the proximal tubular lumen now in case of distal tubular reabsorption have a look some drugs which are uncharged they pass through the proximal tubule into the loop of Henle and into the distal tubule the reabsorption of the drug occurs in the distal tubule because they are uncharged. So uncharged drugs are actively 
or diffuses not actively it diffuses from the distal tubule into the peritubular capillary network and enter the systemic circulation so we have to prevent this diffusion it is prevented by changing the ph and making it more ionized form uncharged drug is made ionized in the distal tubule in order to prevent this reabsorption into the peritubular capillary network now this process is also known as the ion trapping if we have weak acid we have to make the urine alkaline more acidic more alkaline this will make the drug ionized form so it is not absorbed in the peritubular capillaries if we have weak bases we will make the urine acidic in this way the drug is ionized and the absorption is prevented this is all about the overview of phase reactions and the drug clearance by the kidney please do like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video